I want to solve a system of equations, I can do it through a lot of different methods. We have substitution, we have adding equations to each other, you can multiply equations by numbers, but at the end of the day there are really only three actions you're allowed to take on the system of linear equations and still preserve the same solution. Two of these actions are fairly easy and obvious that they work. The third action is a little bit stranger, but if we use these three actions efficiently, we can always take a system of linear equations and solve them. The first action that's available to us is just switching rows. I can interchange any two equations and I end up with something that's the same as what I started with. It'll look different, but it'll have the same solution. The second action available to me is to multiply an equation by a non-zero number. If I want to solve this system of equations, it might be helpful to multiply this last equation by 3. What I do is I just multiply all the coefficients by 3. As we know from algebra, this doesn't change the solution set for the system, so multiplying by 3 is just a way of changing the appearance, but keeping the same solution. The third action is much more complicated, but also the most useful. It's changing an equation by adding to it a multiple of another equation. This could be as simple as adding two equations together, but generally speaking, your coefficients aren't going to match up that way. In this example, the 2x and the minus x won't add to eliminate one of the variables. So what I want to do is temporarily multiply the second equation by 2. If I do that, my 2x will match up with a negative 2x, and I end up with something that will cancel out perfectly. So I'm going to write that like this. I want row 1, or equation 1, plus twice equation 2. I'm going to replace equation 1 by exactly this. If I do this, twice equation 2 is similar to the last action that we could do. We just multiply everything through by 2. So negative 2x plus 18y is equal to 24. Now the 2x and the minus 2x match up nicely. So when I add equation 1 to it, my 2x and my negative 2x are going to cancel, leaving me with something that doesn't involve x, which as you know from solving these is exactly what we want them to do. So 0 plus 21y is equal to 28. Now I'm going to replace equation 1 by what I came up with when I added these two things together. Equation 2 stays the same. I haven't touched it. So negative x plus 9y is equal to 12. And the benefit of doing it this way and using a temporary multiplication is that it doesn't change my other equations. So my first equation becomes 21y is equal to 28, and from here you could solve this equation quite easily. The ultimate goal of doing these actions is to get my system into what we call diagonal form, which is all the variables by themselves, and then their solutions on the other side. The process of taking a system of equations into diagonal form is called Gauss-Jordan elimination. It's a very algorithmic way of solving these systems. So let's look at an example. This is going to be a small example. The first step of Gauss-Jordan elimination is to find some way to use the upper left, or this negative 5x, to get rid of the 3x below it. And there's not really an easy way of doing that right now, so what I'm going to do is multiply both my equations so that their coefficients match up. When I do this, I can multiply the first equation by 3, so row 1 by 3, and the second equation by 5, row 2 by 5. When I do this, my two coefficients of my x variables will be nice and easy to, to eliminate each other. So what I get is negative 15x plus 2y is equal to 8, not 2y, sorry, multiply by 3. 6y is equal to 24, and when you multiply by 5, 15x plus 5y is equal to 26 times 5, which is 130. So once these are the same, I'm going to use that negative 15x to get rid of the 15x. I want to get in diagonal form, so I want to have x's in my upper left and nothing else below it. All the x's below it should have been eliminated. Um, let me use a different pen. So I'm going to write that like this. I want row 2. I'm going to add to it row 1. If I do that, the 15x and the negative 15x cancel and then whatever's left over will be whatever's left over. So when I do that, what I end up with, the first equation doesn't change. Negative 15x plus 6y is equal to 24. 
My second equation, when I add the two together, gives me 0, and then 6y plus 5y is 11y, and then 24 plus 130 is 154. Now I want to do the same thing with the y's. I want to take this 11y and get rid of the 6y. And once again, there's not really an easy way of doing that. So I'm going to multiply my second equation by 1 over 11, or divide it by 11. When I do that, the 11y becomes just y, and that'll be easier to work with. So my first equation hasn't changed. My second equation becomes y is equal to 154 over 11, which is 14. Now it's easy to use this y to get rid of the 6y. I do that using the third action. I'm going to take row 1 and subtract 6 times row 2 from it. In general, whenever the variable is by itself, when it's 1 times y in this case, we can get rid of anything above or below it just by using this simple action. So when I do that, the negative 15x doesn't change because there's nothing below it. The 6y minus 6y becomes 0. And then 24 minus 6 times 14 will be the right-hand side of this. This will be negative 60. 24 minus 6 times 14. My y equals 14 doesn't change. The last step is to get it into full diagonal form by multiplying my first equation by something that will get rid of the coefficient of the x. In this case, negative 1 15th, or divide by negative 15. So negative 15x over negative 15 is 1, or 1 times x, and then negative 60 over negative 15 is 4. So our final solution is x equals 4 and y equals 14. You could probably have solved this in a faster way, but this method is nice because it's going to allow us to solve larger systems in a very algorithmic way, which will be useful. We can connect the system of linear equations into a matrix, a matrix just being a collection of numbers by pulling out the coefficients and putting them into an array. All of the coefficients and all the right-hand sides become numbers in our array. And we differentiate the right-hand side from the rest of the coefficients by just drawing this dot, um, vertical line. The goal of Gaussian elimination is to get all of our matrices into diagonal form. And this is what diagonal form will look like for a matrix. So try to convert this matrix into diagonal form. Use the actions that we had, all three of them, and try to get this so that you have nothing but ones down the middle and zeros everywhere else. I'm going to post the full solution in the next video. So try it on your own, and then go to there and take a look. Make sure that what you're doing makes sense in terms of the, the system that we have. As always, let me know if you have any questions. Either post a comment or post them in the forums, and I will answer anything you have.